In today's video, I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know about how to ace the off-season stages in your CFM franchise mode, as I will show you several tips, tricks, and cheats that you can use to turn any team into a dynasty in just one off-season. So if you want to see how to save money while crushing the free agency period, or if you want to see how to find every single superstar rookie in the draft, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Mad Cheese, as always. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys the best method for drafting the best players in any uh, CFM you play, whether it's online, connected franchise, or offline franchises. I'm going to show you the best way to scout so that you can find the best players for your system and your team because everybody has different needs. So I'm going to show you guys my roster, and I'm going to show you guys how I scouted this entire draft class to find the best players that fit my system. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit like button, let me know in the comment section. It really helps out the video and the channel. And I plan on doing more CFM tip videos in the future uh, because I have a lot. As I started as I started back and playing CFM to make tip videos about the specific game mode because there's not a lot of people out there doing that. So if you want to see that, make sure to be a subscriber. Other than that, the first thing you got to do before you even bother going into the draft board prospects or any of this stuff is you got to find out what the holes are on your team. So I'm going to back out and go to my depth chart or go to my roster. And this is my current roster. If you guys don't know, in my last video, about I think it was about offense, I told you guys how somebody ruined our league. So we decided to start a new league with rosters that are updated. So I have guys like Saquon and Barkley and stuff like that. But all these down arrows and stuff like that aren't a result of me. Basically, what we did was we restarted the league, but we fast-forwarded to the second season because nobody wants to play the entire first season again. So we're in the second season, off-season, and we have updated rosters to match the NFL. So that's why I got guys like Saquon and Barkley on the team. Uh, although, this is still midway through free agency, so it's not 100% accurate, but it's still about as accurate as we could get it to restart the league because I wanted stuff like this. I wanted to have the upcoming NFL rosters in the league. So if I go through my team and I say, what do I actually need? I don't need a quarterback. I don't need a running back. I don't really need wide receivers because I'm the Eagles. If you guys don't know, I'm an Eagles fan, which is why um, I use the Eagles all the time uh, as I really didn't want to use anybody else. I don't really need tight ends. Uh, I don't really need a lot of left tackle, left guard, but I do need uh, a center possibly a right guard possibly and a right tackle possibly as you can see I don't have any because Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey retired so my biggest needs are gonna be offensive line which a lot of people aren't really gonna be going for if you guys play CFM franchise mode you know most people are going for quarterbacks or receivers or maybe cornerbacks these are the positions that have the most value because they're the most important most people are passing players and if you don't have a quarterback it's really hard to do that if you don't have receivers that are fast it's really hard to do if you don't have cornerbacks that can cover you know it's really hard to stop these guys so so these are the most important positions, but luckily I don't really have these problems. My biggest issues are going to be linemen, so I'm going to do a lot of scouting focused on that. And I'm going to prioritize that because if you don't have good linemen, I mean, linemen aren't the most important thing in the world because to me, if you've got a quick passing game or if you know how to work the pocket as a quarterback, you won't have as much trouble as somebody who, you know, even if you have great linemen a lot of times, if you roll out too much or you're too erratic in the pocket, it triggers uh, shed animations. So if you know how to play the quarterback position, linemen isn't necessarily the most important thing even when running the ball if your if your offensive linemen aren't great as long as you know how to set your blocks up with the running back it doesn't really matter these are all things that don't really matter but for CFM since I don't have a ton of other needs this is probably going to be my focus is going to be getting some young offensive linemen that I can build in my franchise so that's going to be one of the, one of the most important things especially on the outside because Lane Johnson with all his abilities he had all day and all kind of stuff on it so he was up to the point where he could kind of shut down an edge for, for, for the most part, except for like really fast ones, like when I would play Dallas and stuff like that. Uh, Mika Parsons, who didn't really face up against him a lot, but Demarcus Lawrence, a really elite edge guy, still would get around these guys anyway. If I get to the defensive side, once again, I'm self-scouting right now. I'm looking at what do I need? I could use an end. I mean, Bryce Huff is a young guy. He's decent. He's got A3 speed. Speed's one of the most important things, which I'll go over in a minute. Uh, but I have some decent edges. I actually really like Josh Sweat, even though his rag's down right now. I have a lot of defensive tackles on the Eagles, some of which can easily play defensive end if I wanted to move them out based off of my scheme. I got three defensive tackles that I all like. Milt Williams is an A3 speed defensive tackle. They're all fast. So 81, A2. I can move one of these guys to edge if I want to. There's a lot of options there. So I really don't need a lot of defensive linemen, but I would put that in like a secondary need uh, with offensive linemen being first, defensive linemen maybe being like a secondary or you know a third need, but I'm going to keep that on my radar. Then I go to the line Linebacking core, I'm pretty happy with them. I got guys that can play outside linebacker or edge like Hassan Reddick. Uh, 
Devon, Devin White, and you know I'm happy with my linebackers. I don't use a ton of linebackers anyway, since I pretty much want to use mostly um, you know safeties at linebacker and stuff like that. If I can get away with that, Nolan Smith is another guy who's kind of an edge. I could use him on the defensive line if I want to. Uh, he's a superstar, by the way, because he won Defensive Player of the Year in our last league um, with some some of the blitzes that I show you guys. So that's why he's a superstar. But definitely a lot of options with the front seven. Not a lot of need there. If I were to self-scout my scheme, I don't really have a zone-defending linebacker, which I typically want. With my 3-3 odd scheme, I typically want at least one linebacker that has a really high zone. And I have that in Devin White, but given that he's a 91 speed, I actually think I'd rather keep him as my user. As you can see, I did sign him to, I think, a five-year deal. So he's going to be around. He's probably going to be my user for a long time because of that 91 speed, even though he doesn't jump. I also like to use uh, one of my safeties, which I'll go ahead and I'll get back to here. Uh, in uh, Sidney Brown, I was using a lot. As you can see, I, I pumped up his man coverage because I manned him to a lot of people. But that's also one of the strengths of Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. So it's like I can use either one of those guys. They both have A2 man. I can use either one of those guys as a box defender. But if I do that, which a lot of people do, I don't really have two safeties for the backside. So sometimes I'll use a cornerback. A lot of times I'll use James Bradbury because he's not really fast enough for actual corner. But he is fast enough to play safety in my scheme. And he has uh, an 84 zone. So that happens quite a bit. But you can see I don't really have a need for cornerback as much. Because the only free agent that I was lucky enough to sign in this entire free agency class was Tredavious White. And it's really because I just didn't see the value in a lot of other players. I'll actually back out and look at the free agency. We'll do it. We'll do a two for here. I'll show you guys. Uh, well, I guess sign free agency is still up. We're still in the last stage of, of free agency. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more advice when it comes to signing free agents as well. As you can see, the top 100 here. Um, I just don't feel like a lot of these guys were worth the price that was paid. So Tyron Smith, he's 35. I mean, he's still like a 95 overall. He's, what is he, 35 years old, I think I saw somewhere. Signing him for two years, $23 million with a $33 million bonus. I don't really understand paying that much for somebody when I can find, once again, I don't value linemen that high anyway. A young uh, edge rusher like Josh Allen, I kind of like. That's a really massive contract, though, once again. I feel like I could get similar value uh, for less. That's really how you have to look at it. Can you get similar value for less? Tredavious White was the only X-Factor player on the entire market, and I was lucky enough to get him. He's still 29 years old, and I'm paying about $20 million a year. I got a $20 million a year salary with a 21 bonus. I don't really, you know, I think that's total. So $42 million for that. Um, you know, there's guys, like I said, a lot of these contracts are just ridiculous to the point where it's like, I don't really feel like the age and combined with like their speed, like this is a good contract, definitely a good player, but he's an 88 speed. So it's like, I really didn't value him. So I really just went and looked like, you know, a lot of these guys, like I, I think Kareem Hunt's a nice value, but if I got to pay five and a half million for that guy a year, not going to do it. I'll wait to see if like a guy like JK Dobbins slips through because he has no offers right now. If he slides through and I can get him for, you know, a 91 speed young running back, who's only like 25 uh, as a backup running back, because I don't need one anyway, save when Barkley's there. I like JK Dobbins, but if I buy him right now, if I put a on him right now i'm going to overpay for him so it's not worth it stuff like that i'm just going to let it slide if he slides through he slides through if he doesn't he doesn't it's a backup player anyway you know what i'm saying i was looking at leno here uh once again that price is too high i can get a guy in similar range once the market's over you know what i mean i could probably get when i when i when i look at my my free agencies too which i didn't really mention I really just look at a specific category. And I'm gonna get back to this information when I get back to the scouting. Because when you when you build a team, you just have to know what your scheme is. I don't need a high overall player. I just need for my offensive line, since I plan on passing a lot this year, I need a high pass blocking offensive lineman. So basically that's gonna be my focus. I could get this guy right here, Juwan James. He's an 80, which is okay. You know, I mean? it's not great. He's 32 years old. Um, here's another guy too, might be even better, Josh Jones, who's a 79 and a 78 because he's a little bit younger. But that's the younger guy that I could probably work up faster because of that. Here he goes, 27 years old. I don't know where I missed that information. So that's a really good player that I could target after free agency is over. He has interest now, but I don't want to pay that price. And he's not even in the right position because I still have a left tackle, but I could just switch him to guard or switch him to right tackle. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the ratings might change, but like I said, the only rating that matters to me is pass block because that's what I plan on doing. That's my skill. Scheme. He's got an 80 pass block finesse. He's also got a pass block 79. These are all pretty close to the point where once I get into the league, I can probably get that above 80 pretty simple. All that stuff above 80 pretty quickly. So I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that when the when the free agency market ends, I don't want to overpay for these guys now because they're probably still going to be there. They have no offers. So I let all that slide. I'm not going to overpay just to hold just to hold a guy down. Same thing with uh, you know guards. I need a, a, I need a guard. I need a center. I'm going to focus on guys that like this don't have an offer in right now. He's 32, but he's got an 80 plus 
pass block, 80 plus pass, uh, you know, pass block power, footwork, all that. So if he's still there, I'm going to snatch him up for the cheap once the league year starts. He's not a high overall, but the only thing I care about is those pass blocking ratings. So there's a lot of options there that I can get later and I don't have to overpay for now. Because if I try to get this guy now, I mean, that's not a bad contract. It'll probably be similar. This is something I actually can think about doing right now. Because if I try to pick him up on the market later, it's not going to be that much higher. So let's go ahead and let's drop this offer down. It'll probably be similar to like a three and a half mil anyway. So let's go ahead and let's throw that on him just to see if we can secure that because he did have a high interest in me and that's something that I am interested in. So let's go ahead and let's, like I said, this is, this to me is probably the best way to go. It's a low ball offer, but if he doesn't take it on the last, um, you know, thing, I could probably just pick him up later anyway. All the right tackles are pretty much gone. Um, once again, I'm just looking at guys like this guy here, 78, 80. Um, you know, this is, this is, you know, he's got an 80 pass block. This is all stuff that I could be interested in. Uh, let's take a look at how much he's asking for right now. Like I said, one year for all that money, I'm sure I can get it way cheaper, but I'll lowball him and see if he takes it. I don't think typically if they don't get the offer they want, I don't think that they really, uh, go for it. But here's another reason why I don't want to do too high is because, um, as I'm, I'm just going to lowball this and see if he takes it. I don't think he will, but either way, I'm going to lowball it, see if he takes it. And the other thing is, um, you know, if I get a really good tackle in the draft, I just wasted my money. So that's why a lot of times you want to wait too, because I will be focusing on tackle or on linemen in the draft to the point where this guy might not necessarily make sense anymore. But like I said, that's not bad. I mean, I could definitely work with that as a stopgap guy for a year and any lineman I draft might not be ready to play anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put a bid down because I'm lowballing these guys. If they take it, they take it. If they don't, they don't. And I don't really care. So going back to self-scouting, because it doesn't really matter if any of those free agents sign or not, because they're not really long-term answers. But I do have no issues in secondary, realistically. I could use a safety because I really only have two that I like in Brown and uh, CJ Gardner Johnson. Although Tristan McCollum, I can use sometimes. He's six foot three with good speed. Sometimes I put him in the box and use him. Reed Blankenship's decent. He's young. But I really could use a third safety because my third safety right now is probably James Bradbury. And I don't want that uh, to be a long term answer. I'd actually like to get rid of him. So I don't really need a linebacker. But like I said, I could still use a coverage guy. I'm not really sure if I'll get that in the draft or not. But I consider these all to be secondary needs. My primary needs are gonna be offensive line because I feel like that's probably the most important. But if one of my favorite players from one of these other positions drops, I still might prioritize them. So no, going into the draft, I know. Line is probably number one. Uh, secondary coverage is probably number two. That's pretty much how I'm gonna look at it. But I don't really need a lot of speed, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna scout things like receiver. I know a lot of people are gonna be scouting receiver crazy, but speed's still king and mad in my opinion. So I'm still gonna scout every position, every skill position for those super fast guys. Because if I find a 99 speed running back or receiver or tight end and they're sitting there when I draft, I might do it anyway. You know I mean? I might feel the need to do that just because the importance of that. Because if I do get, let's say I do get a 99 speed anything you know what i mean cornerback running back receiver it doesn't matter the trade value of that guy is going to be insane so it's like you also have to look at it like that even though i need linemen i'd rather have a 99 speed something that i could trade for a you know an 85 to 90 plus guard than pick up a you know a rookie lineman that i can't really boost up too easily because you can't even put linemen in the uh, the mini games that you do week to week you can't even make a lineman a focus player i'll go back to the draft board just to show you guys um you know i had this idea midway through as i was scouting i was like well maybe i should give these tips away because that's what i typically do but let's go back into scouting college players when you get here there's four different things here there's a regional breakdown scouts mock drafts i don't go to none of that i go straight to prospects because i know exactly what i want and then when i get here i do all reasons i leave it there i don't go region region i find that that's just confusing let's have them all in one place because one of the biggest issues when it comes to scouting is there's so much information being thrown at you if you click on any of these players you got all this information here in the scouting report then you got all the physical information from the combine then you got all the skills and all the letter grades it's like there's so much information what are you supposed to focus on i mean obviously this guy's pretty easy because he has all these a's going across the board he's going to be a good player but not every player is this obvious so this guy here i'm, gonna, I'm sure he's going to be like an x factor or something but he's he's just been the dude all year like this is dude's, this is like trevor lawrence andrew luck you know it's pretty obvious but I don't, I don't need a quarterback anyway, and I'm never going to be able to draft him. He's probably going to be the first player off the board. But there are other things that I need. So quarterback, 
I don't really have to spend time there. I got Jalen Hurts. That that's the one position I'm locked in. I can't get out of him anyway. If I cut him, I think it's like a 120 million dollar cap hit. So we're gonna move on from that. Running back, same thing. I got Saquon Barkley, uh, but I haven't really looked yet because, like I said, this is a position I actually still will scout. So what we're gonna do here is when it comes to running backs, I don't really feel like there's anything specific that's important when it comes to the uh, to the ratings shown. The uh, ball carrier, break tackle, carry, catch. None of that is a specific category that I'm looking for specifically. So I'm actually going to say this for last. I'll come back to this. I didn't do safeties because I want to use that here. Now, when it comes to safeties in my specific uh, you know, scheme, I don't run a lot of cover zero. So they're not really in man coverage a lot. Sometimes I, I do run some cover ones, so they might be in man coverage there. But realistically, I really mostly run zone coverages. So I want to make sure that these safeties have high zones. So there's two ways to look at this. Number one, I want physical profile guys. I want guys that are over six foot. I want guys that have um, really good speed. And I want guys that have really good zone coverage. Everything else I don't really care about. So since I know my scheme specifically, I care about uh, closing speed on deep passing when it comes to safeties. Because the, the longer the ball's in the air, the more time you have to recover. The more time you have to click on and sprint to the position where the ball is. So all I really care about is speed and zone coverage. I want them to be as close to the receiver as possible when I click on. And I want them to have the physical ability to get in position and I'll jump them for the ball, which is like a six foot three guy maybe, like Tony Hawkins here. So those are the, 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 the I'm going to go through every position here. You can see there's 20 guys and this is actually not a lot. Like if I go to cornerbacks, I went through all the cornerbacks. There's 44 guys there and I went through every one of them looking for those physical attributes that I can build because if I find a safety who's six foot three, 99 speed, I don't care what his ratings are. I'm going to build him week by week by doing the practice stuff in the, in the focus player section. So, cause that's the most important thing to me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through every guy. This is the top guy. His zone coverage only is C though. Like to me, that's not very good. So his speed has to be, he's only 5'10 also. So he's already in the in the hole. He might be a, the only first round projected free safety, but he's already in the hole because of those two ratings are lower than what I want. So if I click on him and his speed isn't 4'4 four, four or better, he's not even, I'm not even looking his way. And sure enough, he's got a 4'5 speed. So I like that his, I mean, his hit power is high. Maybe that's why it's only a B, but he is not on my radar. So he's, I'm going to move right past six foot one, zone coverage B. That right away, two wins. You know what I mean? Lorenzo uh, Westbrook. This guy here is already two for two. So I don't care about the rest. I don't care about his man coverage. I don't care about nothing else. I'm, I'm specifically limiting my focus to the things that are important to me. The no next most important thing is speed. If I click this physical over and he's got a 4.7 speed, he's off the radar. He's got a 4.6. That's still not really that fast. That's not really something that I'm like feeling. So I'll put a, uh, a, a add favor to him because he's got two out of three, but he's not very high on my radar. Now the next guy, he's five nine, doesn't have a very high zone. I'm still gonna check because if he's got, a, you know, if he's he's got blazing speed, I still might think about it. But you know, that's that's okay. You know, four three or four 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 three. I really go by. They try to trick you. I feel like sometimes when it comes to the college pro day. I always kind of um, am hesitant. I always kind of try to look at the the combine because in real life, the college pro has always seem to be a little bit higher and it's kind of suspect. So I wonder if Madden kind of works that into the game, but I'm not really sure. That I'm not really sure about. But we're going to go ahead. We're going we're gonna to leave that guy alone because he is short. I'm just not feeling Kawhi Benson in general. We're going to go ahead down to Tony Hawkins here. This guy's six foot three. The zone coverage is B to D. I always go towards the low end. But like I said, the six foot three makes it to the point where if it is a D, I don't really care, especially if he has good speed. So if he has two out of the three things I like, I will work him up. And sure enough, he's slow as balls. So I'm not going to work him up. So that dude's off my radar. That's a shame because six foot three is nice. So let's go and let's go to this guy. This guy's on the rise. Got a C zone, which is pretty decent. And he's got crazy speed. So this guy, six foot one, four three two uh, 40 time. This guy is, I don't know how I end up on this guy. This guy right here, uh, Keenan Terrell, who's shooting up the board, by the way, for a very good reason. Probably because of those blazing speeds. He is very high on my radar now. Six foot one is the most important part. I know he's locking in a zone coverage at a C, which is very good too. So that size and speed combo has him very high on my radar. Next guy here, once again, zone coverage A to C. Very similar to Terrell. He's taller too with a six foot three. So we're going to go ahead and look at that. It all comes down to the speed at this point for him to get ahead of Terrell, and it's very poor. So we're not interested. We're going to move on. 5'10". Z zone coverage. I don't think this guy's going to have it, but like I said, that speed could matter. Not going to work out. Five or 4.5. And I'm just going to go right through the whole list like this. This is this is not something I got to spend a lot of time on. He's 5'9". I don't care about his zone. Once you get to a certain point, though, you can tell just looking at the zone coverage and the height. D zone coverage and height. I don't really got to spend a lot of time on this guy. He's got to have blazing speed to save him for him, and he doesn't. 4'4 four is okay, but it's not worth it for that for me at that point. 5'11", uh, same thing. 
Let's take a look. His uh, his zone is C to F. I gotta I gotta think it could come up F. His speed isn't blazing at this point. If I'm coming down here to, and looking for guys, I'm really just looking for blazing speed to catch my attention. And if you don't have that, I'm probably just gonna move on. Here's a B to D zone coverage, six foot one, not good speed. Like I said, I don't have to spend a lot of time looking through each individual statistic. I can just go through it like this: four five, or four five, got a Z or a C zone coverage, five nine, not really worth it. Um, 510 with a D not really worth it. This is uh, C to F, but he is six foot one So I'll take a second to look into him a little bit more Four five, not bad um, That's a guy that's I'm not really too interested in if I'm being honest uh, 510 here six six, you know, not not fast enough I could just go through the entire bracket like this in a matter of moments. He's a six foot guy with a C zone uh, he's got really good speed, so now I gotta look at him a little bit more. So yeah, this guy here could be a sleeper with that C zone, fits my schemes, got really good speed. He broke a four four nine. See the thing too is like I'm not looking for first rounders. Like a guy like this, maybe he's still there in the fourth, fifth round or something like that. You know what I mean? Like that's a guy that I could easily take because once I go through this entire draft class, I have to look at. What are the chances of me getting somebody like this later in the draft and laying this slide? Especially since he went down 10 spots. I don't really understand why he went down. So, you know, maybe people look at that and they're like, ah, you know, he's not good. I don't know if people are confused by the ratings of going up and down. I don't really bother with that. But I'm going through this kind of fast because this doesn't have to be a lengthy process. Nobody wants to scout a thousand players all day. You can do this in probably the length that I'm, I'm kind of doing this video. This can be like an hour long thing as that guy's really slow. Like I said, slow immediately eliminates you from contention you know what i mean this guy here 4.5 this late in the draft he's six foot one he's got a c zone if that guy's still there it's just potential udfa if he's still there in the sixth or seventh round i'll snatch that up so i still have to go this low and check this out and i still got the entire strong safety market to do too but i'm gonna leave you guys um you know i'm not gonna bother with that because it's the same position i'll do that off camera but looking at cornerbacks i went all the way to the bottom here i went through all 44 found a guy here by the name of Gaines, who's six foot one all the way at the bottom. And he has ridiculous speed, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 4.37 at uh, six foot one. This is a guy who, if he's like Kalen Barnes, who I had last year before the league got reset, who was six foot 96 speed, I got the ability to boost my cornerback speed plus three uh, in my coaching tree on defense. So whatever his zone coverage is, if he's super fast, if I get a chance at him late in the draft and he's a he comes out to be like a 95 speed at six foot one, I'm gonna work him up most likely, or at least have a position for him somewhere. So like I said, you want to go all the way to the bottom. Now when it comes to things like linemen, like I said, that was something that I really had to do. This to me it's way more important to have a high uh, pass block rating to start because it's not very easy to work up linemen the same way as it is focused position players now that i went through and i targeted all the guys that i want to target i also have to look at the strength of those positions like left tackle there's a lot of guys you know what i mean there's a lot of guys there i could probably especially since people don't really focus on linemen I think guard was one of the better ones too. Left guards, ton of left guards that I like that have high pass block. Once again, looking specifically for pass block. We got an A guy here. He's a third to fourth round. Uh, an A pass block here. Uh, like I said, I don't really care about their physical stats because that's not important. There's a there's this guy here has mostly A's and B's, which is why he's still my radar, even though I prefer these guys because they have straight A pass blocks and stuff like that. That's something that, you know, I can probably get in like the second or third round if they're because they're not all going to get taken. People are mostly going to wipe out the receivers, the running backs, the quarterbacks, and the corners. So I'm going to finish this scouting off camera. I'll show you guys uh, some footage of how the draft went. Maybe my first round pick, maybe I'll record that. And then I'll show you guys how the draft went in total. And you guys can tell me if you think I did a good job drafting or a bad job drafting after we get the results. All right, so the draft is done, and I'm going to show you guys what you can do after the draft. There was a couple of linemen that I was really trying to get or I had an opportunity to get. I think Joe Boyce was at one point one of them. This guy here, he turned out to be a star development. If you guys don't know, if you're a commissioner of a league, you can go into edit player, and you can just tab over a few times, tab over right or left twice, and it will bring you their development trait because you can change that. So even though you can't see them at the start, you can go into this if you're if you're a, a, a commissioner. So this guy's a star player, which is not bad, but I still had him as a heart uh, when I did my um, when I did my favorite system. So that was a good a good um, you know I was on point there. I don't necessarily remember all the guys that I was looking at, but I'll show you the the developmental traits for the guys that I picked up. 
So my first pick at 16 was Alexander Dwyer. And I, I once again, I used the exact same formula that I showed you guys. I went with uh, pass block ratings and stuff like that, even though this guy isn't very high to start. Only, um, I mean, his footwork's really good and his run block's pretty good. So I went with this guy because he had a lot of A ratings, but he also was a, uh, I think he was rated as a top 10 or a first round pick, which things like that carry a little bit of weight when it comes to overalls. But I also feel it carries a little bit of weight when it comes to dev traits. So I tried to focus on them if I could. And you can see this guy has a hidden dev trait. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'll keep going, I'll go back to the edit player to show you guys what his actual um, overall rating is, or his uh, dev trait is. And luckily enough, he was a superstar. So I basically got um, a pretty good player with my first pick. You can't get much higher. I mean, you can't get to an X factor. It's not something you get with linemen, though. That's the thing. And most of the guys I drafted were linemen. So this is as high as you could get for this position. He's going to need some work, and I don't necessarily have the ability to uh, do focus player stuff. But I really need a tackle, and he's one of the best ones in the entire draft. So I got him at 16. We'll go ahead and we'll back out. Now, there was a player by the name of Jamie Beverly, which you could see is, if I go back to the draft board when I selected, he is ranked higher than the player that I took. But the reason that I took this other player is because he has two solid confirmed A's where this player only has one B and two potential A to C categories. So I went with the two solid A's because I saw consistency in his traits to the point where it would let me to believe that he would be a better pick. And when I, the draft was over, I went back to make this video anyway, to look at what Jamie Beverly, uh, superstar, what Jamie Beverly's rating was, his dev trait, and it was lower, it was a star rating. So I made the right pick by using this formula, which is something I just wanted to show you guys to do this and repeat this in your own CFMs. Now there was also a player below him that had three A ratings, which is still, if you think about it, better than two A ratings, but why did I choose the player that I took over this player here, David Bass? The truth is that the projected ratings of where they go in the draft, like first round, top five, those things typically carry a lot of weight when it comes to things like development traits. So I chose him because I thought that it would have a better development trait as far as a superstar or star or whatever. And I was right once again, as David Bass might have had three A ratings, but because he was rated in the first to second round, he only got a star development. So this is something that you could use when it comes to selecting players. If you can get a guy that's projected to go in the first round over a guy that's projected to go in the second, third, whatever, the guy that's projected to go in the first round has a much higher higher chance of being a higher dev trait than a guy drafted later in the draft or projected to go later in the draft, as this player here only became a star player as well. I picked another tackle after that uh, by the name of Tom Gilkey, but I didn't really need two tackles, I only needed one. So I kicked him inside the guard. And the reason I kicked him inside the guard is because of his speed and his, his athleticism is just worse. Typically, if you're on the edge, you want to have high speed, high acceleration, high agility. He's higher. I chose Alexander to play right tackle because he's higher in all of them. He has a higher speed, he has a higher agility. Uh, all that stuff matters. Everything's, be everything's better. I don't know if his acceleration was, but I'm not too, yeah, e everything's better physically. So that's why Gilke got kicked inside the guard. They do that a lot in real life. But this guy here, once again, this guy was a physical freak. I don't really look at things like strength and stuff like that. I mean, I think that's a little bit more important when it comes to guards and running inside because you want guys that can move those strong defensive tackles out of the way. And he does have that 90 strength. So that is a bit of an improvement. But I know a lot of people really draft these guys based off of strength ratings. I don't really do that. I go by the system that I showed you guys. I go by the pass block. This guy has an 80 pass block power, which I really like. And he just looks like a good overall player. But the most important thing, once again, is the dev trait. So let's go ahead and let's back out once again, you can see I got a hidden dev trait. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to go into edit player to show you guys that once again, we nailed our, I don't know if he was my second pick, but I think he was, he was in my top four picks. I had four picks in the first two or three rounds. And this guy here um, was another superstar. So I was two for two on linemen. Although I did draft a guard at one point who didn't, who turned out to be a normal, but I did nail once again, this is another guy who I think was um, a first round grade or something like that. Maybe it was a first or second round grade. I think both of these guys were, I don't really remember. But this is another scenario where I chose a player that actually had a lower round grade, a two to, thir a two to three projection, over a player that had a one to two projection. And I did it because his grades were averaging higher. He has two A's, a B, and then an A slash B, 
where the guy above him has two A's, a C, and a B. So based off of that C, I thought that this guy was a better player, and I lucked out and also got a better development trait as well. And I got two superstar linemen, which is huge because that's really what I needed. So two of these guys really worked out. Another guy that was in my top four picks uh, that really worked out, I told you guys I really needed a third safety. And I wanted to stick to a guy that was a, a, sim a similar physical build to a guy like Tristan McCollum, who's a six foot three, 90 speed safety, but he's like really, um, you know, his, his just, he has no dev trait. And it's hard to build a guy like this. Uh, I mean, I could, but I wanted something like this, which is with a little bit more of a head start because he's only got a 67 zone. All that stuff's pretty low, and I don't want to build that guy like that. So I ended up drafting a guy by the name of Connor Rogers, who's six foot two. He's a 74 overall to start. He has 91 speed, and the best part is, I mean, his zone coverage is 73, two which is higher. But the best part is, is I nailed the dev trait one more time as I got another superstar player. I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys. Just so you guys don't think that uh, I'm BSing. I got three superstar players out of my first four picks. Now, going back to the draft, you can see my draft board here. I really only had two guys to choose from. Antonio Harris and Connor Rogers were the two top safeties left on my board. I went with Connor Rogers for two reasons, even though they both have the same projected draft grade of around one to two. I went with him because he had a big, a better physical profile being six foot two, which I told you earlier was more important to me. But if you look at the ratings once again, you can see that there's a solid D grade in Antonio Harris's man coverage rating, where the lowest solid grade for my guy doesn't even have D as an option. You have zone, which is A to C, tackling, which is A to C. There's no Ds at all. So the fact that I have the, I don't have any low grades like that, let me know that this player is going to be a better player. And if I go to Antonio Harris, you can see that he was drafted by the Green Bay Packers, and he did, in fact, have a lower dev grade as well as only a star grade compared to my superstar grade in Connor Rogers, meaning that I might have gotten the best strong safety in the entire class. Now, I do have one more tip before I end this video, and I showed you guys a lot of UDFAs that were on the, um, on the market that were uh, are still on the market. So if I really want to dig deep, if I really want to build my roster and take a look at those guys, all I really have to do is go to free agents. I'm going to go position. I mean, I can go position by position once again, just by staying uh, in the all category and then flipping the age. So if I really want to look at, say I really wanted a quarterback, but there really wasn't anything out there. Um, here's a guy, you know, if I really want a guy with a 96 throw power, decent speed at 74, it's not horrible. I could try to build this guy and I could see his dev rating. If I go over to the strong safeties, I mean, this is not a bad prospect right here. He's six foot, nine, almost 90 speed to 89 speed. And he has a 73 zone to start. That's just about as good. If I compare this guy, I'll go ahead and I'll sign him real quick and just compare him to uh to the guy that i signed obviously he's not going to be a superstar but in a situation where i really need a safety to build he's not a bad option i mean if i don't really have a ton of great players let's go and let's take a look at our roster let's go ahead and let's compare this udfa that i just signed to my actual superstar safety so we have connor rogers he's obviously a much higher overall um, you know, he's 6'2 compared to 6'0. Six 6'0 foot. Six foot's definitely good though. And then you look at speed, he's about, you know, they're pretty pretty similar. 91 speed to 89 is not a huge difference uh, for a safety. Change of direction, obviously, for Connor Rogers is much better. Um, you know, most things are going to be better. That's why he has a higher rating. But if we get the zone coverage, which was my initial criteria, or at least part of it, he matches. You know what I mean? Like this guy here, I just got for free. I didn't have to draft him at all, but he meets all three levels of my criteria. He's six foot or taller. He has close to a 90 speed and his zone coverage to start is a 73. And I got him for free. Now, like I said, obviously you want to get superstars and stuff like that, which you're not always going to get. But if you're really desperate, if you really need a player, this is a good guy to work up. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more videos like this in the future, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit like button, leave me in the comment section as I plan on putting out more. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. I'm going to shit out.